first sheet and we will discuss about something called as I concepts, which I will um, explain using this column, marked price. So let me go here. There is I concepts. Okay, there are different ways in which we can indicate certain things using arrows. Again, we have three, we have different things. Let's go with this. Actually, you can choose anything. I'll, I'll choose this. This is called as traffic lights. Choose a set of icons to represent the values in selected cells. So I'm going to select this three traffic light symbol. Now let's understand what actually happens here. It is basically going to divide your data into three parts. Okay, whatever data I have, it is divided into one third and one third and one third. Okay. So it divides my data. One moment, please. Okay, I should. It divides your data into one third, again to one third, and again to one third. So whatever values come under the first bucket, they will be in one color. Whatever values come in the second one third of the bucket will come in another color. Whatever value, values come in the third, last bucket, Okay, so let's say 0 to 33 percent, okay, 34 to 67 percent, and this will be 67 to 100 percent. Based on the percentages, it is going to divide. It breaks your data into one third, one third, one third, because there are three symbols, right? Red, yellow, and green. Therefore, it works like that. Let me show it to you with another example. Okay, let's say I have data like this. If this is my data and if I apply the traffic signal data icon over here, what will happen? So it basically divided the data, the data into three parts, right? These three, one, two, and three are here. Four, five, and six are in one color. Seven, eight, and nine are in one color. Now, if I change the values, so basically what is the overall range is what the system will check. What is the overall range of values that we are dealing with? The overall range of values we are dealing with is one to nine. And when I break this into three parts, one to three is one part, four to uh, six is one part, and then seven, eight, and nine is another part of my data. All right, now I'll make a small change here. Suppose this is also three. Suppose I change this value to one, to three. Look at, or, or to two, look at what is happening. So when I say one third, it is not, the, uh, I mean, it's not like you have nine records, so three, three, three records. No, it is based on the values. When I say one third of one to nine, one, two, and three, all the three numbers will go into the first 33% of the data. That could be even half of your values which fall in that range. Is this point clear? It could be even half of the values that could fall in the one third range. Physically, half of my data is going there, more than half. However, this is the range that is the one third of the entire data range. Okay, when you're breaking your data into three, uh, this is called data distribution. Where do we use this? This feature that we are talking about is called as data distribution. We are breaking our data into buckets. Okay, we're taking the complete range of data and breaking into three buckets and seeing how many values are there in each bucket. Imagine this is some um, 
the ranks that people have scored. Okay, let's say some college or some institute. Um, nine children appeared for an exam. And out of the nine children who appeared for the exam, these are their ranks. So we see that there is a tie in the first position. There's a tie in the second position. But five out of the nine people have managed to stand in the first three places. Is it clear now when to use data icon sets? It is related to data distribution. You're breaking your data into buckets. And then you're looking at how many observations are there in each bucket. Okay, so if I change this, uh, if I change the final number itself, let's say this is only six, then what will happen? Everything will change accordingly. Because now the range that I'm dealing with is not one to nine. Now the range that I'm dealing with is one to six. So what will happen? Accordingly, th things will change. Okay, here it has removed the middle parts. Uh, sorry, to eight. This is one to eight, right? Let me change this also. I'll make this five. And I will make this six. Now look at that. So if we are dealing with this kind of information here, what happens? This is one, two, six, the overall range, right? First, you have to check the overall. Overall, the range of values are from one to six. And when I break this overall data into three buckets, one and two will be in one bucket, three and four will be in one bucket, five and six will be in another bucket, isn't it? So you can see one and two, all in red color. Three and four of which I have only three in yellow. Five and six of which I have uh, five and six occurring three times, they are in the next bucket. So we are bucketing our data over here. Yeah, this, this is all discrete data only, yes. It can be continuous also, it will work. Even if you have decimals and continuous data, it will work. Here I'm trying to explain it with whole numbers, it can also be decimal numbers, accordingly it will break the data. All right, so I hope it's clear. Can you show three colors in one circle? No, we can't show three colors in one circle. There is a reason, there is a purpose why these circles are kept separate to indicate the values, right? Okay, so now here, the what is the range of data that we are looking at is, we have uh, very, very low values like 40, et cetera, okay? That is, I think uh, we have quite small numbers. Then we have medium range values, which are coming in yellow. And we have the high range values also, which are here coming in green, like 678, 494, 546, et cetera. All right, so this is the purpose of representing the data using icon sets. Yeah, yeah, it does not matter. You can have positive numbers, negative numbers, you can have decimals, whatever it might be, it will divide your data into three parts. By looking at the complete range of data, it is going to break it into three parts. So let's say you have negative 10, okay, and the negative eight, then you have negative five, then you have zero, then you have two, three, then you have, uh, let's say five and 10. Okay, let's just make this numerical. Okay, this is my complete range of data. What is my entire range of data from a positive 10 to a negative 10? And if I go and apply the color icons over here, okay, so far we are doing only three parts, so like this. If I want to break it down into four parts, quarter, 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 right? One third, one third, one third is what we saw. Now, if I use four, then it will be four quarters, of which we don't have data in one of the quarter, as you can see. So let me change this to maybe negative three. You're getting it. So like that, we can go ahead and use this data. Basically, this is distribution, data distribution. We will dive deeper into the concept of distribution when we start creating visualizations. 
Okay, just remember that di distribution is where you take the entire range of data and you break it into smaller intervals. Okay, and you're looking at how many observations or how many values are there in each bucket. Okay, so that was about uh, 